Hey kid builders, it's Mr. Tariq here. I'm one of the leaders here at Grace Covenant Church of Sterling, Kid Builders. And I'm just checking in with you to go over our lesson from this past week that was titled Running the Race. That was a great lesson um, and a great encouragement to just really just be faithful and persevere and run hard to make sure that we now are not only staying on course, but that we know where we're heading to and what we're running for. So now, before I ask our question, let's do a quick review of the story. In fact, why don't we pause here for a second, make sure that you go grab your Bibles, grab a notepad, and make sure that you have something to write with. We're going to have a couple verses of Scripture that we're going to go over. I really want you to write those down so that you can go back and read those as you go through the week and reflect on them and really plant those seeds deep inside of yourself Ask God, what are you trying to say to me, Lord? What is it that you really want me to understand about this question and about your word so that God can water those seeds and it can really blossom and grow and bring forth that fruit in your life? So let's go ahead and hop right into the recap. Now, Philippians is another book that is included in the division of the New Testament called Paul's Letters. Now, here's something that we should remember, kids, when it comes to our Bible, okay? The New Testament Bible divisions are Gospels, History, Paul's Letters, General Letters, and Prophecy. So let's break that down. Gospels really includes the books of basically Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, okay? The History is summed up in the book of Acts. So we get to really see and read about the history of the early church. Paul's letters, and he wrote a lot of them, um, from the book of Romans all the way to Philemon. Um, there are several letters, and it's really all of these letters that Paul wrote to the early church and to specific believers like Philemon um, that include really all of that wisdom that Paul really was trying to pour out into the early church. There are general letters, and we find those in books like Hebrews and Jude. And finally, there's prophecy. We find that in the book of Revelation. And some people might say, oh my gosh, that's a scary book. It's not really scary as much as it is a prophecy. And we get to see the final, climactic, ultimate victory that God has. So, I don't want to spoil it for you if you haven't already read there to the end, but I promise you, the ending is amazing! It's, I can't go on. It's amazing. That's all I can say. But back to our lesson recap. Now, if I had to sum up our Bible lesson, running the race, the main point of the story would be following Jesus is like running a race for a wonderful prize that is better it's better, 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 better than anything that me or you or anybody that you knew. If we took all of those things and we added all of them up together and we all came up and had an amazing brainstorm and said, man, this is the most amazing thing ever. It would still be better than that. So finally, Jesus is like running a race for that wonderful prize. That is better than anything that we could dream or hope of. It's really that amazing. So... Let's continue. Now, in our last lesson, Together in Jesus, we saw that Paul was in Rome and he was in prison. Now, while Paul was in a Roman prison from probably about 80, 60, so about 60 years after Christ died to about 62 years, so basically about a two-year time period, he was writing letters a lot. It's not like today where we can type out an email and send it to somebody. No, it took time. You had to get paper and pen and you sat there and you wrote it and then you didn't even have like a I guess they didn't really have like the post office like we have today so they had different ways to send that letter by someone who was going to another city or a carrier but they would send that letter out now he wrote letters to churches he had started or visited on his missionary journeys and despite all of his circumstances Paul's letter to the church at Philippi it's filled with joy, really. Now, Philippians reveals Paul's heart as a devoted 
follower of Christ. It's full of practical advice about how to live our lives for Jesus, as well as how to love others. Now, Paul wrote about knowing Christ, and he said that his relationship with Jesus was the only thing that mattered. And this was the opposite of his priorities before becoming a believer. In fact, in his letter, he reminded them that true joy comes only from knowing Jesus. In fact, this is what Paul said uh, in his letter. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. As you live, watch out for people who do evil things. Watch out for people who try to act religious. We are true believers if we worship by the Spirit, not trusting in ourselves or our abilities. Now, Paul said that if anyone could be confident in his own abilities, it was him. Paul had been born a Jew. He followed the law and had persecuted the church because he thought it was the right thing to do. But now that Paul knew Jesus, all the things that were once important to him, they didn't matter at all. Nothing is more important than knowing Jesus. Paul said, I lost everything so I can know Christ, and he is worth it. Now that I belong to Jesus, I am made right with God, not because of what I do, but because of what Jesus has done for me. I trust in him by faith. Paul is amazing in how he really sums up, I think, the way that we feel inside as believers. Yes, we, we do lose something. We lose our old selves. But it's all worth it to know Jesus. And we can trust in him in faith also. You see, Paul compared following Jesus to running a race. Following Jesus, it's not always easy, but he is always worth it. All right, so now that we've got through that recap, I have a few questions to see how well you were paying attention to the lesson. Now remember, if you have not had a chance to watch our lesson, ask dad, ask mom to find that lesson, running the race, right here on our social media page, and then come on back and answer these questions with us. Now remember, the best way for you to not miss these great Bible lessons about the gospel is to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss these great lessons and these lesson recaps. And you can also make sure that you hit that little notification bell so that you get that. You hear that bell? That bell will give you that little alert and it'll let you know, or it may let mom or dad know that, hey, Team KB just dropped a lesson, or hey, they just dropped a lesson recap. And it's time to go check it out. So we're going to go ahead and dismiss all of our friends who haven't watched the video yet. We'll see you guys later. Remember, it's running the race. That's the one that you want to get. Have mom or dad find it. We'll see you guys in a little bit, okay? All right. All right. So everybody's gone. Let's go ahead and get started. We're going to jump right in because we're going to take off on this race and run it. All right. So question number one. Oh, it's going to be good. Question number one. What might keep us from living for God? Mm. What might keep us from living for God? Okay, so what can keep us from living from, for God? So we can recognize that in order to run the race of following Jesus, we got to get rid of anything that gets in the way of knowing Jesus. So, spending too much time playing video games, you have to ask yourself, when I die, is playing these video games going to get me into heaven? Honest answer is probably no. Um, if you're spending too much time or focus on anything, whether it be food or sports or video games or 
whatever it is that that is distracting you or keeping you from following Jesus, you have to, I guess, weigh that out. Is this thing more important or less important than following Jesus? If we give ourselves a truthful and honest answer, even though it may be enjoyable in the short term, it's not going to be better than following Jesus. Now, Paul, he encouraged believers to put no confidence in the flesh. Anything we could accomplish on our own or in any earthly possession. Now, when we want to when we want to better understand what God is trying to show us, we can do that by listening to him by reading his word. So I have a question for you. What does God want you to understand about not only the race we must run, but who we should be focused on running to? So let's go ahead and look at our first Bible verse of scripture. And these verses of scripture are going to come from the book of Hebrews. And we're going to go to chapter number 12 and we're going to read verses 1 and 2. So go ahead and open up your Bibles with me. We're going to go to the New Testament and we are going to go to the book of Hebrews. And we're going to go to chapter number 12 and we're going to read verses 1 and 2. All right. So Mr. Tariq is there. Chapter number 12. And we're going to read verses 1. One and two together. Now, if you haven't gotten there, just write it down. Go ahead and listen to us while we go ahead and read these verses of Scripture. And it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight in sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Now, verse number two. Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. That's a lot. You guys are probably going to have to go back and read that. And I'd encourage you to read that with mom and dad. And share with them what that means to you. Ask them what that means to them. And take some time and pray about it and read and ask God to help you understand in your heart what that means to him for you. Now, for Mr. Tariq, it's really important that when we look at that, we keep our eyes focused on running our race. The great cloud of witnesses are all of the believers who've come before us and we build on their testimony. And someday we'll be gone and we will be part of that great cloud of witnesses. But we need, still need to set aside anything as far as things that are keeping our attention or focus off of God, those sins that are trying to follow with us. And we need to be faithful and endure in running what God set before us. And we have to look to Jesus. We've got to keep our eyes on him because Jesus here is the prize. All right, so let's go ahead and hop in the second question. Question number two. How is the Christian life like running a race? How is the Christian life like running a race? Following Jesus requires focus and determination. And just like an athlete or a runner um, has to have that, we also need to be focused and determined in following God. Now, the good news is that God gives us the promise of eternal life to cling to. And he also gives us the strength to press on. So he's giving us both the promise of the prize as well as the strength to reach that prize. That's pretty amazing. 
Now, our next verse of scripture that I want you to write down to study and reflect on, is going to come from the book of Isaiah in chapter number 40 in verse 31. So we're actually going to go all the way back into the Old Testament now. So we're going to go ahead and open our Bibles. We're going to go back to the book of Isaiah. Oops, this tree went too far. Almost there. Out of books. Okay. There we go. So Isaiah, and we're going to go to chapter number 40 and verse 31. So Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31 reads, But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So, when we do anything physical like running a race, we will eventually run out of energy. Our stamina will get low, and we eventually will tire and we'll stop. And this will happen every time we try to run with only our strength. When we are running our race, we must remember that it is not a sprint over a short distance. We're running a marathon, and only when we patiently wait for God to complete his work in us, do we activate, or I'm sorry, we don't activate it, but God will activate a strength that allows us to cross the finish line of the race that he has laid before us. So that's how a Christian life is like running a race. It requires that we have to have that focus. It requires that we have to be determined. And just like a runner in a race, we have to actually do the work to get there to finish that finish line. Oh. Not to finish the finish line, but to get across the finish line. But you know what I mean. So let's go ahead and get jump into our third and final question. Question number ah, three. How can we stay motivated while living for God? Oh, it's a good question for Mr. Tariq. How can we stay motivated while living for God? Mm, that was a good question. So, bring it in, guys. Can I share something? And let me just be real with you for a moment. Anything that we lose or any difficulty we face, it will be worth enduring to know God more and to serve Him. Now, our motivation comes from knowing that when we have finished running the race of life, and are united with God forever, we will be satisfied, and He will be glorified. In fact, one of the things I know, I'm going to just go off for track for a second here, um, I think really anything that any believer wants to hear when we finally reach Jesus is, well done, my good and faithful servant. It's always wonderful, and it makes you feel so good when you are appreciate it and acknowledge for being faithful in the work that you've done. All right, so let's get back. Our final verse of scripture that Mr. Tariq wants you to write down and reflect on, it's going to come from 2 Timothy chapter number 4, verse number 7. So we're going to go back to one of Paul's letters here, and we're going to go to the New Testament, and we're going to go to the book of 2 Timothy and we're going to find chapter number four and verse number seven. Okay, here we go. So 2 Timothy chapter four, verse seven reads, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now a time comes in every person's life when you reach the end. Now, it could be the end of a school project, a sports season. Maybe you're graduating from school, moving up to a level. Or 
you're finishing school altogether. Maybe it's starting a new job. Or maybe you're getting a promotion to a new position in that job. And ultimately, also, when we reach the end of our lives. Now, it's natural to look at what you have done and to reflect on what was accomplished. But the most important race you will ever run in your life is the race into Jesus' loving arms. So we want to live our lives well. We want to be faithful in what we have been called to be responsible over. And we want to finish strong with faith. So our Father in heaven is proud of us. Because of Jesus' work on the cross, we can live with hope, knowing we will have an eternal home with him. When we are faced with hardships in life, in this life, we can press on, following God with confidence, because the best is yet to come, I promise. So from everyone here at Kid Builders, we love you so much. And remember, guys, please read your